The cinema experience has been enjoyed by everyone for more than a century. But with today's availability of in-home devices and streaming platforms, one gets to wonder, why do we still go to the cinema? Amsterdam's Tuschinski Theater, a cinema celebrating its 100th birthday, believes to have an answer. For nearly a century, the theater has served all sorts of people with the highest standards possible, providing a movie experience incomparable from home. The cinema was founded by Abraham Tuschinski and his two brothers-in-law. He was not Dutch. He came to the Netherlands in 1904 as an immigrant from what was at the time Russia, or the, the Russian part of what is now Poland. Why he came to the Netherlands, we do, do not know exactly. He claimed later that he was on his way to the US, as did many European Jews at the time, because of anti-Semitism anti in Russia. So later he said that he was going to the US, but he failed to be on time to catch his boat in Rotterdam. So he decided to stay on, and in the end he stayed on for, well, for the rest of practically his whole life. After having had four successful theaters in Rotterdam, Abraham Tuschinski set to build the most extravagant cinema in the Netherlands. The theater officially opened its doors in the Regulier Breestraat in Amsterdam on October 28, 1921, and has offered a world-class experience ever since. A number of architects were involved in the building of the Tuschinski Theater, but most notable is the renowned Dutch architect Heiman Louis de Jong. Heiman Louis de Jong was an, an Amsterdam-based architect and builder, a building company in those days. The functions of uh, being the builder and being the architect were often combined. And Heiman Louis de Jong was the one who made the initial drawings and the design for the theater. But then after some time, Tuschinski and Heiman Louis de Jong, well, they started to fight. Tuschinski was a difficult person to work with. And he had the reputation that he would meddle with everything about the designing process, the building process. He wants to be in charge and in control of about everything. And this often led to difficulties with the building companies and the architects that he worked with, including Heiman Louis de Jong. And they got a row about something. It even came to a lawsuit and de Jong quit the whole enterprise. And then Tuschinski brought in another architect, the brothers Klaphaak. And Tuschinski had experience with working with Klaphaak, but also been responsible for building or rebuilding and redecorating several of his Rotterdam-based cinemas. <laughs> The VIP room is Tuschinski Theater's most exclusive and prestigious room. Today, an event bar and a hall of memories, this room used to be filled with intellectuals and celebrities. As the rest of the theater, this room follows a clear Art Nouveau style. Every corner has been designed in detail. The room is conveniently placed next to the private balcony rooms of the main theater. The best spot for an unforgettable movie experience. mid-1930s as a result of the economic crisis, the Tuschinski company went, well, almost broke, that they didn't go into bankruptcy. It was a result of the fact that some investors and the Nederlandse Bioscoop Bond, the Dutch Cinema League, they intervened. They arranged that new investors came into the business in the mid-1930s. They saved the company and they kept Tuschinski and his two brother-in-laws on their payroll, but they were no longer the owners of the theater. And then in 1940, after the start of the German occupation, this company was forced to fire its Jewish personnel, including Tuschinski and his brothers-in-law. And after a while, they became the victims of in the Nazi prosecution of the Jews. And in the summer of 1942, he was arrested with 
the larger part of his whole family, as the story goes, because of the fact that he used the telephone of his neighbor. They were deported, well, first to Westerbork, to the camp in the eastern part of the Netherlands, in Drenthe, where all Dutch Jews were brought together before they were deported to the destruction camps in Eastern Europe. And already in September, Tuschinski and his family were deported to Auschwitz, where right after they arrived, they were brought to the gas chambers and killed there. Today, the Tuschinski Theater represents Abraham Tuschinski's idea of world-class cinema and Amsterdam's passion for the arts and culture. Recently, the cinema underwent a number of renovations to refurbish their theater's original looks. In response to this, Time Out magazine proclaimed the Tuschinski Theater as the world's most beautiful cinema, attracting a worldwide attention. When it comes to the Tuschinski Theater, a movie's quality is the last you think of. 